Hello, this is Thomas from InvestmentExcel.com. Today we will look at mortgage back securities or just mortgage bonds, particularly those with a callable feature, which means that the, the borrower has an option on prepaying the outstanding amount fully or in part. We will also look at risk figures critical for um, callable bonds, the duration and the convexity, which are uh, in some cases very different from uh, their non-callable counterparts, even on the on the same uh, structure of the bond. The underlying stochastic model of interest rates is, in this case, the black Derman toy model. And I refer to some of the sessions that I have made if you'd like to go in more detail with this particular model because in this session we will primarily focus on the cash flow structure uh, driven by the prepayment option on the side of the borrowers. All right, this video and the Excel sheet are available at investmentexcel.com and perhaps even on spotify.com. Let's get to it. Whenever we price a mortgage bond with a callable feature, we need two main engines, an interest rate model and a prepayment model. The interest rate model obviously drives the evolution of future stochastic rates, short rates, and the prepayment model defines uh, under what circumstances the borrower can prepay uh, fully or in part his outstanding uh, debt. We choose the Black Diamond Toy as the model uh, for interest rates and we choose a simple American call option as a prepayment model. An American call option with an exercise price of 100. The BGT model was originally formulated as a continuous model with a lot normal uh, property making uh, negative short rates uh, impossible uh, in the future. When we apply, apply the model, we use this little simple uh, discretized version of the continuous counterpart. All right, uh, before digging into the callable bond, I will just use the BDT model to calibrate all future stochastic rates, binomial rates, to the zero coupon bond prices. I have the option to calibrate both to the zero coupon bond prices and to the volatility structure observed today, but I will just um, calibrate to the, the term, stru term structure of interest rates holding constant the volatility over time at 15%. So down here I have so far a set of of path of the short rate. There's one here, and there are many. Oh, sorry, I should have gone up there. So obviously it's it's discrete, but we need to calibrate all these levels of interest rates so that we can price a zero coupon bond on this ladder and it gives the price today exactly so i'll just start calibrating and we found a solution and we can go down here and see <coughs> for each maturity the spot price of the bond is here the observed one and the other one is the one calibrated by the model the pv of the model and they are exactly the same. So what we have done here is to come up with a set of future stochastic rates that implicitly uh, gives the correct uh, level of prices of zero coupon bonds. And we can just test it by pricing, say, a five-year zero coupon bond uh, on this tree. So five maturity zero coupon and one in principle and what we get 
is 0.86 and we can see that down here the cash flow of the non-callable bond starts year 5 zero all other places I discount it and it gives me 86 I don't have the prices here so I'll just take this level that I found for the five year and and invert it to get to get the yield and see if that's the same as that observed. So it should give three percent and it did. Alright, so now it's calibrated and let's try to to price a 10-year coupon bond and this 10-year coupon bond will uh, non-callable coupon bond will also be the same as the callable bond except for this one feature about callability but let's just start by pricing the non-callable -call counterpart of the callable mortgage bonds so 10 years maturity, 6 in coupon and 100 in principal. And you see the cash flow here. Principal plus coupon at maturity in all states. And the coupon bond or the coupon in all other states. If we discount it now on the short rate interest rate tree, which is risk-free, we get a PV of 160, which is much higher than the market price observed on, on the non-callable bond, which is 102. So there must be some kind of premium and this bond is not issued by uh, the state or the government issuing the, 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 the zero rate uh, bills or bonds. So let's find the, the spread. So there is a spread or risk premium on the non-callable bond on 1.72. Only including this will we get the current market price in the pricing lattice. So now, what about the callable bond? The callable bond, we need to price on the OAS which is a part of the spread and then the option premium but let's just see how the cash flow is right now yeah so 106 in the end and then we discount and whenever the it's appropriate according to the American call option so to prepay the borrower will do it and here are two states and here are two another states and why do I know that I know that because the the payment here in this note will be uh, the minimum of 100 PV plus the coupon so it must be the case that there is a prepayment all these places unless by statistical chance uh, the market price or the, the PV should be exactly 106 we see here that the present value on the callable pricing ladder is 101 and the actual price is 99 so we need to to have another premium which is the option premium and we'll do exactly the same as with the OS we'll build another premium on, on top of the OS so a further 0 0.77 77 uh, basis points uh, is required in order for investors to buy this bond at 99 and now we are actually there where we can uh, start shocking the term structure in order to calculate the duration and the convexity 
but it's very, very important. And here, people are, are often mistaken that the shock is in the term structure. Given that the premium are already in there, so so it the shock has to be where the price is calibrated to the market price, where the PV is calibrated to the to the market price. And I will just try to calculate the OAD, which is a percentage uh, interest rate sensitivity to the PV by shocking it with with one. So I know that the starting price is 99 and let's see what happens to the oh sorry the the, the PV lattice price is 99 and let's see what happens if we increase rates by one it goes to 92 oh let me just start the other way what happens if we decrease rates 11319 and uh, what happens if we increase 926 so we get uh, a duration ratio of 5.72% so this is quite easy to calculate just have to shock and the the shorter steps we make uh, say we make 0 0.25 instead it will be uh, more and more exact just like when we calculated it on an uncallable uh, bond we have to do exactly the same with the OAC but now we have we have calculated them so this is the way to do it so build the short range of stream calculate the the cash flow of the callable bond um, and uh, fit it to the current market price and then shock the term structure up and down with one percent as we do normally when we calculate the um, uh, duration and uh, convexity and the shock of the term structure is yeah it just goes in here so one percent on top of each of, of, of these all right that's about it thank you